Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Want success? This ancient practice is your modern superpower. Learn how to unlock the power of dua during these blessed final nights of Ramadan. I have made more progress in achieving my life goals in the last two years than I did in my first 40. And today I want to share my secret, dua. Prayer is an essential component to all world religions, and it forms the backbone of Islamic practice. Most, most Muslims think of prayer, however, they are referring to salah, the five daily prayers that are one of the pillars of Islam. While salah is absolutely essential, it follows a fixed routine and it doesn't lend itself as easily to customization. Dua, on the other hand, is a more personal form of prayer, where you can unload your deepest desires and fears to the one being who can solve them all, Allah. The most important dua of my life. The most important dua I ever made was at Hajj back in 2003. My burning desire at that time, as it is for many young Muslims, was to find a spouse who could be my companion in this world and the next. On the day of Arafah, the spiritual climax of the pilgrimage, I made a design a bride dua in which I shared with Allah the exact qualities I was looking for in a wife. When I returned from Hajj, I had an email waiting for me from a sister named Ruhina, who turned out to be the answer to my prayers. Within three months of Hajj, we were engaged, and just six months after that life-altering dua, we were married. This August will mark 20 years. Alhamdulillah. I detailed our remarkable courtship and eventual marriage in A Preppy Wasm Fight Wife. Despite the success of this dua, for many years I underutilized this form of prayer, falling into a routine for much of the year of somewhat robotic duas that did not establish a deep connection with Allah. Every Ramadan, particularly during the last ten nights, I would briefly lock in and power my entire year with a few sincere duas in the last third of the night during tahajjud. But these ultimate flow states of dua were fleeting, and I rarely accessed them outside of this beautiful month. P pronounced prayers, the power of dua out loud. A couple of years ago, I stumbled upon a habit that changed everything, making dua out loud. When I hit the age of 40, I faced the proverbial midlife crisis. Was I fulfilling my potential? Had I allowed myself to get stuck in a rut? What would the second half of my life look like? This crisis coincided with the onset of the pandemic, which in turn helped me discover the magic of walking. In addition to listening to podcasts and audiobooks during my 20,000 steps per day, I began speaking to Allah out loud. Deep inside beautiful state parks bursting with signs of the Creator and far removed from any other humans, I was inspired to speak with Allah in a more conversational tone than I had ever used before. Walking unlocks my creativity, and my du'as became intensely personal and increasingly profound. Something about speaking out loud allowed me to reach a level of focus and sincerity that had eluded me for so many years outside of Ramadan. Shift from soul to soul solutions. Most of us are doing everything backwards. When we face a challenge, our first inclination is to ask, how can I solve this? problem. What can I do to make things better? 17 times a day in Surah Fatiha, we say, You alone do we worship, and from you alone do we seek help. But our actions show that we are only giving lip service to this prayer, and its reality has not penetrated our heart. So many of us rely exclusively on ourselves and our worldly asbab or means to solve our problems, turning only to Allah when things have become hopeless. Allah himself has, has told us about this quality in the following ayah. If they happen to be aboard a ship caught in a storm, they cry out to Allah alone in sincere devotion. But as soon as he delivers them safely to shore, they associate others with him once again. The goal of today's FBF is to convince everyone, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, to tap into the superpower of sincere dua, especially dua spoken out loud between only you and Allah. Number one, Ramadan, a dua a day. 
While the du'as I have been discussing so far are personal ones emanating from your heart and typically in your native language, nothing can compare to the Qur'anic du'as and those taught to us by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wife of my local imam, Sister Nadia Salma Ahmed, wrote a short book called Ramadan, a du'a a day. It is a compilation of 30 authentic du'as drawn from the Qur'an and Sunnah. It is magical. On the 27th night, I have a tradition of going somewhere in nature in the middle of the night and using my headlamp and reading all 30 du'as in both Arabic and English. Here is the very first du'a. Allahumma aslah li dini alladhi huwa ismatu amri wa aslah li dunyaya allati fiha ma'ashi wa aslah li akhirati allati ilayha ma'adi wa ja'ala al-hayata ziyadatan li fi kulli khayr وَجَعَلَ الْمَوْتَ رَاحَةً لِي مِنْ كُلِّ شَرْ O oh Allah, set right for me my deen, in which lies the protection of my affair, and set right for me this world, in which lies my livelihood, and set right for me the next world, where I have to return. Let my life be such that I earn more and more good in it, and let my death be a joyful release from all troubles. Notice how beautiful and comprehensive it is, and what a punch it packs in so few words. Subhanallah. Number two, two Mushin Du'as, Daring to Dream Big. With my Find Your Qibla premium coaching students, we are currently working on building moonshot du'as that we can make during these precious last 10 days of Ramadan. These are powerful, ambitious prayers that stretch our imagination and faith. A mission du'a is bold and aspirational and intertwines your worldly ambitions with your hopes for the hereafter. In order to qualify as a moonshot, the du'a needs to give you butterflies, be a decade in length, and include elements of both dunya and akhirah. I built my first moonshot du'a when I took Visionaire 2030 with Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah. I always yearned to make a huge impact on the ummah, but I was struggling to figure out how. I turned to this problem over to Allah and begged him to open up the way for me to share my talents and skills with the ummah as a whole. The fruit of this dua was five before college. Allah inspired me to found a company that helps Muslim teenagers develop an akhirah orientation and arm them with insider knowledge of how to excel in college admissions and get into the college of their dreams. The trajectory of my life changed forever when I embraced Islam at the age of 15, and my moonshot vision is to transform the ummah, one teenager at a time, by launching them on a path of dunyawi and spiritual success. Number three, tapping into times of acceptance. Last weekend, I attended a coaching business conference in San Diego. One of the speakers, a remarkable man named George Bryant, said something that struck me. For some reason, I always wake up at 3.30 a.m. and am inspired to walk around and talk to God. Last night, I was wandering the hallways of the hotel in the middle of the night. I shared with him this hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu an narrates that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, In the last third of every night, our Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, descends to the lowermost heaven and says, Who is calling me so that I may answer him? Who is asking me so that I may grant him? Who is seeking forgiveness from me so that I may forgive him? These prayers in the last third of the night are known as tahajjud. During these last 10 days of Ramadan, most mosques offer communal tahajjud prayers starting at 2 3 a.m. I actually find that I have more khushua or concentration when I pray tahajjud on my own. Whether alone at home or in the mosque after praying 2, 4, or 8 rakahs, be sure to have time to make dua. Any tears that fall from our eyes during, during these du'as are sufficient without oceans of fire. The, the tears that fall from the eyes of a truthful believer out of the fear of the Lord and then roll down his face, however little they are, even the size of a fly, shall prevent the fire of hell from touching his face. Ibn Majah. The most special time of all is Laylatul Qadr, which Allah describes as better than a thousand months. Oliver Berkman wrote a great self-help book called 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. Both 1,000 months and 4,000 weeks represents 83 years, the average lifespan of a healthy person. This infographic breaks down the untold rewards possible to unlock during Laylatul Qadr. 
the, the catalyst of the 99 names of Allah. One of the best, best ways to start your dua is to call out to Allah using some or all of his 99 names. While the oneness of Allah is the central tenet of Islam, the 99 names are ways that he has described himself that allude to different elements of his majesty. By prefacing your dua with Ya Allah, Ya Alim, Ya Khabir, and pondering on these attributes, you are able to lock in and recognize the immense privilege you have to be in communion with the One. I find repeating Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, ten times or more electrifies my body and makes my hairs stand on end. It is the perfect way to catalyze the, the dua mindset. Applying our superpower in daily life. I, I used to only, only make dua for things pertaining to the akhirah. Once, once I began being in Allah my dun, dunyawi needs as well, I really tapped into the superpower of dua. Let me give a practical example to illustrate what I mean. As I recounted last week, I recently participated in a marathon of 25 sales calls in two weeks. Before each of these calls, to get myself in the zone and give the greatest chance of success, I would turn to Allah. Ya Allah, I am going to be speaking to Aisha and Omar. They are coming to me because they think I can help them increase their iman, discover their purpose, and get into the college of their dreams. But ya Allah, I cannot do anything. It is you alone who control the hearts. If there be good in this program and it will help them grow closer to you, then you allow them to join Find Your Qibla. And if it would harm them in any way, please prevent them from joining. I beg you to enliven my tongue and expand my chest, just as you did for Moses when he spoke to Pharaoh. These students are in complete need of you, and I beg you to allow me to be a conduit to help them get there. I have no doubt that it is thanks to this dua that Allah allowed me to close 12 of the 25 sales. Articles like this are not about information. They are about transformation. While I, of course, love the dopamine hit of your leaks com comments, my greatest ask is, is that you take action on this advice and call out to Allah aloud in the, in the last third of the night. Whether you are Muslim or not, you are calling out to the same God, and he will answer your prayers, inshallah. And if you remember, please remember to make dua for me. Download our free ebook, 11 Mistakes Muslim Families Make When Applying to College, and, and don't forget to hit the heart button if you found this article insightful.